Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, I'm super excited about this particular video that has to do with Maya 2020 release. Maya is one of those apps that actually just come out when almost every app is done with their own release. And I'm super excited about this one just because they did touch a lot of things and instead of focusing their energy on just one part, they actually touched a couple of things that has to do with various sections of Maya. So the very first one, which is something they've been working on over Maya 2019 is the cash playback. So with the cash playback, you get a much more better and a much more cleaner playback. And to me, I think this is one of those cool stuff, especially if you're into previewing your animations just before you start rendering. Also, another thing that is cool is they've also implemented the end particles and also end cloth support to the cash playback. So this one to me is really, really cool. We already know how hard it is for you to simulate clothes and also get it to playback. But now you can get these things working as cool as it is. The cash playback does not just work only for animations now alone, but then it has a dynamic node that actually helps it work more when you're working with dynamic stuff. So moving on to something else that is also very cool that has to do with the timeline. So something else that is cool to me is the bookmark. So they've added a time slider bookmark now. In time slider bookmark, you can literally bookmark your time sliders, give them separate colors, different colors, depending on what you want. And with the bookmark, it's very, very easy for you to troubleshoot your animation. It's also going to be extremely easy for you to go in, flag down an event, flag up an event, actually, you know, move into your scene and have some very cool places. So take, for example, you're doing a walk animation, a run animation and stuff like that. It's going to be extremely easy for you to actually actually bookmark where your animation starts, where it stops. If there are certain parts you need to clean up, maybe you want to check on these things later. It's also going to be extremely cool to help animators get things up and running. So still speaking about the timeline, there is an update to the timeline that deals with audio management. So normally you get to put audio, you know, reference certain audios, especially if you're doing things like uh, facial performances or you want to actually animate to beats and stuff like that. Now there is a very tiny volume icon that exists there in Maya timeline. So you can now use this to actually control how the audio works. At the same time, you can still choose to flip your audio wave and change how the waveform actually displays. There is also a couple of improvement that has to do with the graph editor. So they've actually not reworked, but actually improved the way the graph editor performs. And at the same time, we'll still get some sort of novelty that also deals with the timeline. So right now you can, you know, increase, reduce, resize your time slider as much as you want. Moving on to rigging. So in rigging, there is also a couple of updates. So one of the main updates, which I did see in 2019 within the beta section that did not really make it to the final release, but now is available is the proximity wrap deformer. So with the proximity wrap deformer, it's extremely, extremely easy right now for you to make use of a different object to drive your geometry. So you can use, let's say a low poly or some other objects to actually drive or deform your objects the way you want. I see these in a whole lot of places where it's going to be really, really cool. So for example, maybe you have like a high dense mesh and you want to drive it using low dense mesh. So instead of using the wrap deformer, then I think this is going to play a huge role. At the same time, this is also going to make a lot of sense if you want to have some very custom object to drive certain parts of your character or drive certain parts of your models. There's also a brand new revert command. So with a brand new revert command that actually exists within the section that deals with constraint if you're working in Maya, uh, this actually offers a one more extra step which gives you the, uh, you know, the ability to work with the new matrix driven transform. So this works exactly with using UV pin. So at this point, you can actually select an individual node, an individual surface, and then you can go in and pin this. Now, what happens with this one in a very good sense is you can actually go in there and attach props, attach stuff to your objects. Moving on to modeling. So we did talk about something earlier and we did say that, you know, within the last release, there was nothing really that they talked about modeling. And of course, in this release, there's actually no huge stuff talked about modeling. At the same time, I really wish they talked about UVs, maybe a little bit better, like UV groupings and all that. 
but that doesn't exist in this new release so what we have in the modeling section right now is something that a lot of people have hoped for prayed for and you know it's here so one of the first cool stuff that i kind of like is the fact that right now if you already have a model that you worked on in zbrush and you want to get this model you know you want to do some retopology with this model same thing that we have almost across the board now you can do a very clean remeshing directly here in you know in maya so it's going to save you that time of going in there and using the quad draw tool and creating or you know doing the whole remeshing thing all the way or doing the whole retopology thing all the way from beginning so you're going to have clean geometry that you can work with and at the same time if you want to sculpt on your model instead of using subdivide 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 you can select a certain portion of your model and you can only remesh that particular part so once you remesh that part you can go in there and start making some very cool sculpting decisions and to me this looks like a win-win of course there is a couple of things that a lot of people are expecting coming from the modeling side of things but with this happening here i kind of think that it is not so much to complain about and at the same time i just think that for an app that is coming up this late it's something that we can deal with there's also improvements to the light editor and you know doing your render setup there is a huge improvement with that and there is also a very cool improvement that has to do with the metrics so we already you know talked about that briefly but now talking about rendering so this new version of maya 2020 will be shipping with arnold the gpu version as well that will be included so you know with arnold right now you can leverage the power of nvidia optics uh, I don't know if this is going to work so good for the guys using the Mac right now, but let's see what happens with Metal with the whole upgrade coming very soon. It's also cool to note that there is now a brand new standard surface shader that is available for Maya 2020. This standard surface shader is render agnostic and at the same time, it promises to have very, very minimal artist friendly parameters that you can use. So the shipment is starting now and you can simply have this directly from your hypershade. There is also a whole documentation about the standard, you know, surface coming from Autodesk, which is called Autodesk Standard Surface. There's a whole documentation about that. I'm going to put that in the description so you can go ahead and check that out. So one of the most interesting things that uh, is actually lovable to see is Bifrost. So right now there is a whole lot of work. You, I, you just can't deny it, right? You cannot deny how much work they've put into Bifrost. Of course, you know, this doesn't come close to the beginning, but it's a, you know, a step in the right direction, especially trying to look at the whole procedural thing. Of course, there's also something that looks like this coming from Blender. But the guys from Autodesk have actually done a whole lot for this particular release in regards to Bifrost. And at the same time, they do have sample scenes in case you want to work with Bifrost and you want to get like a quick start. So they do have sample scenes that covers things like aero, combustion, uh, clothes, particle simulation, and so on and so forth. So I would really, really love to see a lot of, you know, trials and errors with these things as well. And of course, we might probably go ahead and cover a couple of videos about this and a couple of videos concerning the new features that have been shipped with this new version of Maya 2020. And at the same time, it's also worth knowing that there is a lot of issues that have been fixed, things that has to do with the animation, things that has to do with caching. And there's also a lot of things that's also been fixed with modeling, with the legacy effects, with rendering, with the motion graphics that has to do with MASH, with the UI and also the viewports. So uh, these, you know, fixes, I'm going to put a link to those things in the description so you can go ahead and check these things out. And we also know that for some reason, there are things that a lot of people need. And there's also things that a lot of people have actually listed that they want. Like me, for example, I really, really want to get that Cosmos feel directly here in Maya. I've been asking for this for a very long time and yet we don't have something like that. And at the same time, I would also like to see something that has to do with a couple of tools that we've talked about recently, which actually includes things like the Mosh 3D that has to do with you. You know, you going in there and sculpting directly on an Alembic file. And also, we've also covered a video that has to do with Sculptrion. And we also talked about this, how you can sculpt and actually animate your sculpt directly into or inside that tool. So I would really, really love to see those things come into Maya. Of course, this is not going to be a tool that covers and does everything. 
But since it is targeted towards animation, I would really really like to see a couple of more animation features that is not just about adding joints and putting skin on things come over to this tool. And if there is going to be some argumentation to Maya, I will also wish that Maya gets the whole modbox attitude inside. We are missing Ptex. And for some reason modbox isn't getting all of the update that it deserves. So if we can ship some of those features, things that has to do with Ptex, texturing and painting and if we can get the whole sculpting tool things directly into Maya, I would be really really excited about those. So these are a couple of things I really want and at the same time there was no huge talk about UVs like we talked about earlier. So if you have anything, suggestions you want to put, please put them down in the comment section and it's going to be cool for everyone to see. And of course tell me what you guys think about this new release. I kind of think that they've done like something really really tangible that has to do with things that people would be you know very excited to work with and at the same time there is still a couple of things that needs to be done tell me what your thoughts are about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video you learned something from it go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this Peace.